Hi class! Welcome back to my channel! In order to get updates with the latest lecture videos and laboratory discussions, kindly click the subscribe button so that you will be notified. So now we are down to the fifth tissue processing step, that is embedding. But before that, let's have a brief recap once again as what we have been doing for the past lectures. We have been reviewing per step, okay? Fixation, it has two main goals that is to fix or preserve fresh tissue for examination and it hardens and protects the tissue from the trauma of further handling so that it is easier to cut during gross examination. Fixation also class allows the tissue to be properly oriented in the cassette in preparation for paraffin embedding and microtomy. Next is grossing. So this is the procedure wherein the medical technologist cuts the tissues into different parts for examination. So decalcification is done when the specimen is a bone, a teeth, or other calcified tissues. So this is to help remove some amount of calcium to avoid gritting sensation during cutting so that mawala tong mga gahi-gahi and makadagsaba during the microtomy. And this will also help avoid the interference with the accurate evaluation and examination of histologic cells. So another striking information regarding dehydration. Aside from this one is necessary to remove the fixative and water from the tissue and replace them with any type of alcohol in preparation for impregnation. The general rule when it comes to dehydration class, you write this down, is the amount of alcohol in each stage should not be less than 10 times the volume of the tissue in order to ensure complete penetration of the tissue by the dehydrating solution. Whatever dehydrating solution is used, it must not be less than 10 times the volume of the tissue. Clearing is also a tissue processing step whereby the dehydrating agent is removed from the tissue and replaced with a substance that can dissolve the wax and gives it a translucent appearance. Meaning, this is the reason why light can pass through the slide and also to the tissue specimen which is already on the slide and you can see it and view it under the microscope with all its cellular details and current microscopic appearance. After clearing class is infiltration or impregnation. This is the process where the clearing agent is completely removed from the tissue and replaced by, what are those again? Paraffin wax, saloidin, and or gelatin impregnating medium. So this medium will completely fill all the tissue cavities, thereby giving your tissue a firm consistency and allow easier handling and cutting of suitably thin sections without any further damage or distortion to the tissue and its cellular components within. After impregnation, the tissue is placed into a mold containing the embedding medium and this medium is allowed to solidify. Paraffin embedded tissues are arranged at the bottom of the mold together with their proper labels and immersed in melted paraffin at a temperature between 5 to 10 degrees Celsius above its melting point and then cooled rapidly in a refrigerator at negative 5 degrees Celsius or immersed in cold water or water with ice cubes or ice chunks to solidify. Using cold water with ice cubes or ice chunks 
are the procedures that we usually perform in our laboratory activities as well as in the laboratory in the hospital. This will allow the hardening of tissues, giving them a firmer consistency, of course, from the paraffin impregnation plus this cooling technique in the embedding. This will also um, give a better support to the tissues, thereby facilitating the cutting of sections easily. Let's define embedding, casting, or blocking again. So this is the process by which the impregnated tissue is placed into a precisely arranged position in a mold containing a medium, which is then allowed to solidify. The process by which a tissue is arranged in precise positions in the mold during embedding, on the microtome before cutting, and on the slide before staining is known as orientation. Generally speaking class, the surface of the section to be cut should be placed parallel to the bottom of the mold in which it is oriented. There are actually several types of blocking out molds that can be purchased commercially. Number one, we have Lockhart's Embedding Mold. This consists of two L-shaped strips of heavy brass or metal arranged on a flat metal plate and which can be moved to adjust the size of the mold to the size of the specimen. Blocks produced are even, with parallel sides and with fairly shaped initial setting of the wax. The mold is adjustable to give a wide variety of sizes to fit the size of the tissue block for casting. It is recommended for routine use, although too slow and cumbersome for use in a busy laboratory. Next is a compound embedding unit. This is made up of a series of interlocking plates resting on a flat metal base, forming several compartments. It has the advantage of embedding more specimens at a time, thereby reducing the time needed for blocking. We also have plastic embedding rings and base mold. So this consists of a special stainless steel base mold fitted with a plastic embedding ring, which later serves as the block holder during cutting. One model, the so-called tissue tech, is equipped with a warm plate to manage the impregnated specimen and a cold plate at negative 5 degrees Celsius for rapid solidification of the block. It consists of a white plastic cassette mold with detachable perforated stainless steel hinge and snap-on lid used to hold the tissue specimen throughout fixation, dehydration, clearing, and wax impregnation. With the tissue tech system, the specimen is placed on the base mold. The plastic embedding ring is placed in position, filled up with wax, and then placed on a small, cool area to allow the wax in the base of the mold to semi-harden. This will allow easy orientation of the block. Once the tissue has been properly oriented, the base of the cassette is placed on top and together they are placed on the cold plate so that the paraffin wax can cool and harden quickly. After the paraffin wax has solidified, usually around 5 minutes class, this really happens, the block is taken out together with the embedding ring and is immediately ready for cutting without having to undergo trimming or mounting, thereby saving time and effort. The advantages of tissue tech includes ease of use, less paraffin wax needed, faster embedding, firmly attached tissue and holder, and permanent identification. It also produces easier orientation when resectioning of tissue is required and blocks can be filed immediately after sectioning. There are also a lot of disposable embedding molds that can be purchased in the market. We have Peel Away, plastic ice trays, and paper boats. 
So let's start first with peel away disposable type embedding molds. This is a disposable thin plastic embedding molds available in three different sizes. You just have to simply peel off one at a time as soon as the wax has solidified, giving perfect even block without trimming. It may be placed directly in the chuck or block holder of the microtome. Next, we have plastic ice trays. So this plastic ice trays class, those that you can see, you can use in ordinary refrigerators. You may use this for busy routine laboratories, but these are not really recommended, okay? Not really recommended. Each compartment may be utilized for embedding one tissue block, which may then be removed by, you know, bending the plastic tray once the wax has solidified or by smearing the inner mold. So the insides of the plastic ice trays class, you smear that. You place glycerin or liquid paraffin before embedding so that you can just remove it easily from the ice trays. But remember, these are not really recommended, okay? Lastly, under disposable embedding molds, we have paper boats. So this is supposedly be taught to you in your laboratory activity, but you know, it's online and you just have to learn it by yourself at home. So you can just make your own paper boat at home. So these are normally utilized for embedding celloidin blocks, but are equally useful for paraffin wax blocks. They have the advantage of being cheap and easy to make because you can make your own paper boat, remember? So just make your own paper boat and then later on it will become a small box. It looks like a disposable peel-away type of embedding mold. So the finished product after making the paper boat is what a peel-away paper boat look like. So it's like that. They provide easy and accurate identification of specimen thereby avoiding confusion and interchange of tissue blocks. Rapid embedding of small or large volume of individual specimen is possible since paper molds can be made to suit any size of the tissue. But the problem with using paper molds class that is that it is time-consuming because you have to make it by yourself. If ever you don't have already any available paper molds, then you have to make it on the spot. So let's say you already made your own paper boat and this is the part, the bottom part of your paper boat, okay? And inside this paper boat, you only have a very tiny tissue specimen. To mark the position of small tissues in the paraffin block, a mark such as an X is drawn with soft lead pencil on the inner surface of the bottom of the boat. This will attach and be visible in the wax block when solidified and removed from the paper boat. Embedding molds should bear the case number and other identification data of the tissue block within. Once tissues have been embedded, they may be stored in a cool place indefinitely until they are cut. There are also other embedding methods previously used. One is saloidine or the nitrocellulose method, which is used to be recommended for embedding hard tissues such as bones and teeth and for large sections of whole organs like the eye. Since the delicate layers of the eyeball are difficult to keep intact when other media are used, tissues were embedded in shallow tins of enamel pans which are covered by sheets of weighted glass. Bell jars were used to control the rate of evaporation of the solvent. The use of saloidin is discouraged now because of the special requirements needed for processing and the limited of these types of sections in neuropathology. The double embedding method, which is already obsolete but is previously used, is a process in which tissues are first infiltrated with saloidin and subsequently embedded in a paraffin wax. This is used to facilitate cutting of large blocks of dense, firm tissues like the brain. 
They're also recommended for making small sections of saloidine blocks. The availability of paraffin waxes containing different types of resins has made this technique old and unacceptable. The introduction of plastic resin embedding media has provided superior results for light microscopic studies, particularly in hard tissues such as undecalcified bone, and for high resolution light microscopy of tissue sections thinner than the usual 4 to 6 micra, such as renal biopsies and bone marrow biopsies. Plastics are classified into epoxy, polyester, or acrylic based on their chemical composition. Epoxy embedding plastics are made up of a carefully balanced mixture of epoxy plastic, catalysts, and accelerators. Three types of epoxy plastics are used in microscopy. The same those based on either bisphenol A or the araldite, or glycerol, commercially known as epon, or cyclohexane dioxide, which is known also as spur. Infiltration by araldite class is low, partly because the epoxy plastic itself is a large molecule. The glycerol-based epoxy plastics have a lower viscosity but are often sold as mixtures of isomers. Cyclohexane dioxide-based plastics can be obtained pure. They also have very low viscosity and can infiltrate the fastest. However, epoxy plastics class have several disadvantages. Number one, they are hydrophobic and subsequent oxidation by peroxide to correct this may produce tissue damage. Epoxide groups may reduce antigenicity of embedded tissue and may compromise the result of immunohistochemical staining. More importantly, epoxy resins may cause sensitization if absorbed by skin or inhalation. The components of many epoxy plastics are toxic and one of its components, vinyl cyclohexane dioxide or known as the VCD, is carcinogenic. For protection, gloves should always be worn when handling these plastics and adequate facilities including an operational fume hood must be provided to remove the toxic vapors and properly dispose of toxic wastes. Polyester plastics were originally introduced for electron microscopy in the mid-1950s, but these have been superseded by more superior epoxides and are now seldom used. Next is that we also have acrylic plastics, which are made of esters of acrylic or methacrylic acid, and are used extensively for light microscopy. For polyglycol methacrylate, this has proved to be a popular embedding medium for light microscopy because it is extremely hydrophilic, allowing many staining methods to be applied, yet tough enough when dehydrated to section well on most microtomes. Acrylic plastics based on methyl methacrylate are also widely used because of its hardness as the ideal embedding medium for undecalcified bone and other hard tissues. Benzoyl peroxide is added to the plastic as a catalyst that decomposes to form phenyl radicals acting as an active site for the polymerization of acrylic. You might want to ask me what is a catalyst and how does a catalyst work? A catalyst is an agent or a substance that can speed up a chemical reaction. So with the case of benzoyl peroxide, this is an active ingredient added to the plastic so that the plastic can decompose faster to form phenyl radicals, which acts as the active site for the polymerization of acrylic. So that's what it's meant. Unlike epoxy plastics, the viscosity of acrylic plastic is very low, 
so that short infiltration times are possible. Although the size and nature of tissue along with processing and embedding temperature will affect the times required for infiltration and embedding. Radicals can be produced spontaneously by heat or light so that acrylic plastics and their monomers should be stored in dark bottles in a cool place to prevent premature polymerization. In general, it is preferable to use acrylic plastic sections when high-resolution light microscopy is required because of their ease of handling and the quality of staining achieved. However, all acrylic hydrophilic media, including glycol methacrylate, are insoluble so that all staining occurs with the plastic inside too. Because of this, the embedding medium itself may become stained or the matrix may act as a physical barrier to particular molecules causing problems during immunohistochemical staining. The alternative use of hydrophobic methyl methacrylate permits the plastic to be dissolved, and for certain techniques, this may be a very useful property. So this one class, I'll be showing you two different processing and embedding schedules for glycol methacrylate and also methyl methacrylate. For acrylic plastic processing and embedding schedule for glycol methacrylate, you're actually going to use two different solutions. For solution A, you'll be using two hydroxyethyl glycol methacrylate, that's 100 ml, and two butoxyethanol, 10 ml, and a dried benzoyl peroxide, that's around 0 0.75 grams. Remember the purpose of benzoyl peroxide this serves as the catalyst so that the plastic can decompose fast to form phenyl radicals remember that very good the second solution which is marked as a solution b that consists of polyethylene glycol 400 and nn dimethyl aniline the fixatives used may be formalin like formal saline, neutral buffered formalin, or buffered paraformaldehyde. If necessary class, rinse tissue in an appropriate buffer for 15 minutes. Dehydrate the tissues through 70%, 90%, and also absolute ethanol. Infiltrate in two changes of solution A, each for one hour. And later on, you have to embed your tissue specimen in the following mixture. For solution A, that's 42 parts. And solution B, that's only one part. Let the embedding medium polymerize at room temperature, standing the mold in cold water to dissipate heat generated by the exothermic reaction. Polymerization should be complete within 2 hours. For the specimen, it should only be processed under an operational fume hood. Processing is best achieved if the specimen is agitated continuously on a roller mixer and only small aliquots of benzoyl peroxide should be dried carefully away from the direct heat and sunlight as it is potentially explosive. It must be completely dissolved in the infiltrating solution and this may take up to 30 minutes. The acrylic plastic mixes are best prepared only in the quantity required, preferably using a large glass vial. It is advisable to measure the quantities volume by weight. Any waste solutions containing plastic components must be handled and discarded in accordance with local and legal requirements. Next is processing and embedding schedule for methyl methacrylate. This schedule can be used for routine and immunohistochemical staining. There is only one solution used 
for methyl methacrylate compared to that of glycol methacrylate that you need to have at least two solutions that solutions a and b but for methyl methacrylate just one solution and that consists of methyl methacrylate monomer that must be unwashed that's 15 ml the dibutyryl phthalate 5 ml and dried benzoyl peroxide that's one gram the tissues can be fixed in different types of formalin. That's 10% formalin or 10% formal saline or 10% formal calcium for 24 to 48 hours. After fixation, you must dehydrate your tissue through 50%, 70%, 90% ethanol for one hour changes in each solution. Complete dehydration through two changes of 100% absolute ethanol uh, for one hour each. Then infiltrate in two changes of infiltrating solution, that's also one hour each. Then embed in 10 ml aliquots of infiltrating solution, to which 125 micra of NN dimethyl aniline is added. Polymerization will occur in 3 to 4 hours. These are the following information that you might want to take note. That's number one. Aliquot of benzoyl peroxide should be dried carefully away from direct heat and sunlight as it is potentially explosive. It is also important that no water is present before dissolving the catalyst, so around 2 minutes. In the infiltrating solution so make sure there is no water processing is best achieved if the specimen is agitated continuously specimen should only be processed under an operational fume hood and still any waste solution containing plastic components must be handled and discarded in accordance with local and legal requirements to be honest, class, I have never tried doing this in the laboratory nor prepared it here in school. So I can't really picture it out on how this procedure is really done. But I think there are already commercial products of glycol methacrylate and methyl methacrylate that can be purchased in the market. Lastly, we will be discussing about trimming. So this is the process of removing excess wax after embedding so this time your tissue block is already solidified together with your embedding medium from this video class the embedding media is a paraffin wax and you have to cut each side the front the back each sides a minimum of two millimeters using knife or blade or using already the microtome but it's best that you do it beforehand before placing it in the microtome block holder trimming is a technique wherein you make sure that each sides have an even surface to facilitate um, easier cutting during microtomy that is it for embedding and trimming thank you so much for listening and have a great day